I got to do something awesome. Last month we had an oratorical contest uh, for our young people here at the church uh, to express and espouse uh, the importance of Black History Month. And a young man absolutely took us by storm, uh, Jonathan McCoy. He's coming now. He wants to share with you uh, his oration that helped him to win uh, the Empowerment Temple Oratorical Contest. I want him to come. Wonderful young man. Come on, sir. This is a future Morehouse man. Give God some praise for him. Amen. Amen. And uh, we, we, we're just uh, excited about his presence and his participation. It is the fulfillment of Lorraine Hansberry's Young, Gifted, and Black. Amen. Uh, to see a young man who will speak truth to power uh, ought to give all of us pause. And I promised him uh, when he won that he'd be able to give his oration uh, in front of the governor because the Bible says uh, that your gift will make room for you and bring you in the presence of greatness. Amen. Uh, and this young man has has a wonderful future. All right. You ready? Okay. Negro. African American. Nor. Nero. Mahogany. Ebony. Nubian. Black. All of these words have the same meaning. Negro is a Spanish noun, descendant of the word Niger, meaning black. Somewhere in history, it was translated to the N-word by those who referred to us as economically, politically, or socially disenfranchised. And said the kings and queens, princes and princesses that we really are. We are descendants of the continent of Africa. Countries like Niger and Nigeria hold our rich heritage. Unfortunately, this misinterpretation of our heritage has been perpetuated among our own race. Rather than obliterate this disrespectful term, we have adapted it as a cultural phrase. You've heard it. What's up, my N-word? Or maybe you said it. Get out of my face, N-word. So why have we taken this word to use it in our everyday language to communicate to or about ourselves? Let me dispel the myth. As a people, we are neither economically, politically, nor socially disenfranchised. Fifty-six years after the Emancipation Proclamation, there was an emergence of blacks who capitalized on their God-given talent. Embodied with the character of self-dedication, they joined together to make a, move, a new movement, the New Negro Movement to be exact. And if this name doesn't ring a bell, then you might be more familiar with the Harlem Renaissance, a band of writers, actors, musicians, poets, and inventors came together for a new beginning. This explains Renaissance, which means reborn. People like Jazz Bo Brown, the name synonymous with the introduction of jazz, Duke Ellington, a jazz musician, Marcus Garvey, a civil rights activist, and Langston Hughes, a poet laureate. So who you call in the N-word? We have held such coveted offices in the history of this nation, and affirmative action had nothing to do with it. According to the definition, an N-word will never be a lawyer, a doctor, or a teacher. Yet many African Americans thrive in these industries. We have held such esteemed offices. As chairman of the FCC, like Michael Powell, Joint Chiefs of Staff, like his father, Colin Powell. Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America, like President Barack Obama. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey would never have the success she experienced or the distinction of being the richest woman in America if she had allowed a termination from her job to economically disenfranchise her. Instead, her presence is required in the most elite social and political domains. So I'm sending a message to everyone who knowingly or ignorantly uses this word to describe our people. Whether you're a gangster rapper who uses it to communicate with your boys, or someone who looks down on those of us who haven't got a college education. Whatever the case, it's time to discontinue the use of this word. It is implausible that 40 years after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that we still use this word that holds no worth in our lives or our future. So I'm petitioning you to join me in deleting this word from our vocabulary as a people, as a nation, and the world. I'd like, I'd 
like to add a stanza to James Warden Johnson's Lift Every Voice. Lift every voice and cry till the inward has died. Let us cry out and proclaim our dignity. Although we may be free, gloom still hangs over we who use the word that made our father sigh. Sing a song that doesn't dishonor the mothers who bore us. Sing a song absent of negative words in the chorus. It's now 2009. Leave the inward behind. Choose words that speak purpose and not defeat. My name is Jonathan Emil McCoy, and I approve this message. Come on, give God some praise. That's our future. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You may be seated.